guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody okay guys so i welcome everybody tonight in this lecture on uh, on uh, carcinoma vulva very very important lecture and tonight in this lecture through this lecture i'll be clarifying certain concepts of yours uh, you know the the difference between lymphadenectomy lymph node dissection lymph biopsy lymph node biopsy the concept of sentinel lymph node why is it important in uh, especially cancer vulva uh, regarding biopsies excisional biopsy incisional biopsy radical excision wide local excision radical vulvectomy what is the difference because when we we'll talk about the management of ca vulva we'll be discussing all these things i'll say for this stage which is the best way of uh, you know uh, managing this particular stage of vulval carcinoma and like i make staging of every carcinoma fun and every carcinoma is uh, you know uh, the staging of it i i i devise a different way to remember in the same manner tonight in this class also i'll give concepts to you to remember vulval carcinoma staging and in that case you will not make see we don't we are not oncologists that we have to remember so many staging of so many cancers right we are gynecologists thankfully that we have only four five cancers to remember and four five cancers staging to remember and that's not a very difficult thing to So CA CA cervix was designed in a different manner. Remember, I told you one, two, three, stage one only to cervix, stage two to cervix. It's just gone below and beyond. That means to parametrium and lower part of the upper part of vagina. Then coming on to uh, the, the stage three, it was again it went on to the lateral walls, went on to the lower side of vagina, and involved the and involved the peritoneal lymph nodes. So we had. three places so stage 3 three structures involved stage 4 is more or less the same in every carcinoma so these first three stages are very very important and stage 1 was the most confusing of all it had stage 1a and 1b micro macro right and then stage 1a1 and 1 1a2 and then stage 1b1 b2 b3 remember so it was only stage 1 which is very difficult stage 2 was also easy stage 3 was also easy stage 4 was that's how i devised the stages for you in ca cervix and this time i'm going to do the same thing with ca ca vulva but it's going to be in a different twist so that you remember ca vulva and different style ca cervix was in a different style last class was on ca uh, on uh, different vulval dystrophies and on bin i expect you to have at least Uh, done a proper revision over it i will not be removing it till tonight but uh, tomorrow morning it will be removed the the last class that i took on uh, vulva <coughs> vulval dystrophies and bin so please go ahead and revise it now i come down to the carcinoma vulva and we start with the a little bit of introduction again this is made by the figo update you know that there is a new clinical classification of uh, ca vulva my students are so uh, you know um, uh, you know i think uh, in with the with the times they are they know about the latest uh, you know management the latest uh, which has come up and it's very good to see that the students are so alert agile and they correct me also many times that ma'am your old ca vulva is uh, there your answer back can can you please uh, remove it and change it and i feel very good i feel very nice i feel very enlightened because it happens that before i think you've already asked me so it's good i there is a you know a a way in which i'll be uh, changing my notes slowly and steadily but there happens to be you know you ma'am ma we are undergoing our exam in, in you know a month can you please change this so i have no problem i take i prioritize my students always and my slow and steady updation of the notes keeps happening but it's good that you people ask whatever you feel like at the right moment in the right time and i love to uh, you know listen to you people and uh, do the corrections on time now with that i move further and i'm like i said this is according to the figo update the entire notes are made on the figo update like i said figo is the body on which we rely the most when it comes to uh, cancers and it is updated almost every year so if there is anything new it is there in the figo update correct so please be watchful even after you like pass your dnb and you want to be updated with whatever is happening the latest you should know that figo is the body at which you have to keep your eye on when you're talking about cancers So vulval cancer is very uncommon. It accounts for about two to five percent of gynecological cancers. That's the reason why you talk less, you study less, you don't know much about vulval carcinoma. Like I asked in the last class, many of you did not have a, a first-hand experience of seeing vulval carcinoma cases or their surgeries. Fortunately enough, I've seen the cases as well. I've, I've assisted in the surgeries as well. Yes, of course, it's very rare, so you don't get to see it very often. 
which is why i understand that your interest your academic institutes they are not so much stressing about balu carson but that being said theory questions theory exams they do not listen to anybody uh, guys i'd like to ask you once more can you hear my voice clearly and can you see the slides properly because if there's any glitch like, like it was happening last time please let me know right now i my voice should be absolutely correctly audible and my slides should be speak and span clean viewable to you why because it will be recorded in that that, that style and that will be forever thank you thank you so much all right so uh, thank you guys be be quick in responding that's the, you know because that we can save time and move ahead with the exam uh, with the class thank you so much guys thank you for being very quick and very agile squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva is a uh, is the most commonest type amongst the vulval carcinoma which is actually a rare carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma happens to be the most common now, at the very outset let me tell you the squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva and squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix they have very close you know connection with each other first of all they are uh they are you know uh, kind of uh, started off with the same offending agent the human papilloma virus hpv the, that's the offending agent which starts the ca cervix and the same one which starts the ca vulva and even when i proceed forward with this lecture tonight you'll see that lot you know similarities are there between ca cervix and ca vulva so this is all that's also squamous cell this is a squamous cell as well when i talk about the vaccination in ca cervix it helps in ca vulva as well because it's got 16 hpv 16 to fight to be against this hpv 16 is already giving you the vaccine right so it is particularly helpful in ca vulva as well there is no evidence for specific screening for vulval cancer have you ever heard about screening in vulval cancer have you ever heard about being a, a screening for vin never right this is what i told uh, spoke to you in the last time see cin and um, you know the pre invasive lesions of the cervix the hpv screening was so important because we can stop the your arrest or you know uh, not exactly arrest but we can prevent the ca cervix from happening if at all we have we we've, we've uh, screened for hpv it comes out positive or if screened for CA, you know the cin of uh, cytology and comes out to be mild or moderate dyskinesis we can uh, there are so many strategies which can help the patient but the screening protocol is not there for uh, you know ca vulva because it's very rare since the screening protocol is not there there are no uh, you know um, strategies defined or made for uh, you know kind of dealing with vin so vin automatically when you know you get vin as vin because you never screen for it suppose you found something very suspicious and you went ahead and did a biopsy it comes out to be vin that's the way it comes out right so there are no screening strategies i told you in the last class as well so finally what happens finally we have to either go for a primary prevention either through vaccines or a uh, you know the secondary prevention which is not there okay or finally a tertiary prevention that means now we know that it is behind so we are going ahead with the excision biopsy right so um, that's about it the, over here what i'm trying to just say is that if there is a already we know that now there is a pre-malignant lesion we go ahead and just excise i'll i'll be telling you further So this is what exactly I want to say. Excision now over here, which I said. So VIN presents represents less than five percent of pre neoplastic lesions of the vulva. So pre neoplastic lesions of the vulva. The other pre neoplastic lesions of the vulva are. Can anybody just put it in the chat box? What are the other para neoplastic pre sorry pre neoplastic lesions of the vulva apart from VIN? What are the ones? I spoke in the last class, and I told you that I'm going to ask you questions from the last class. Very good, Deepa. Excellent. Very, very smart student to find. Very prompt and correct. Lichen sclerosus is one. Lichen planus is the other one. Yes, and VIN happens to be one of the most para pre pre neoplastic lesions. Yes. Uh, leukoplakia. No, I wouldn't say so. But uh, yes, definitely. When when I ask you about pre neoplastic, you have to speak about lichen sclerosus, lichen planus. It was, you know, four percent, six percent predilection is there, right? Uh, Paget's disease. Well, I'll I'll be giving you a slide on that very soon. So just uh, <coughs> wait up for my class later on. There are a few other uh, you know dis uh, dystrophies of the uh, vulva which I did not discuss in the last class, but it has to be uh, nevertheless kept as a complete class to you once. So I'll be giving you those vulval dystrophies tonight and um, uh, in the in the chat in the channel of mine. Please look out for it because that is going to give you a complete class regarding the vulval dystrophies in total, and that has got your Paget's disease and it's got so many other dystrophies which are very uncommon, but which you should know once, right? So, uh, a higher rate of progression to squamous cell carcinoma is found in all these states. It takes a shorter time interval to progression, and if there is a higher recurrence rate uh, as compared to XL, it is rarely associated with persistent HPV infection. But the best way to handle 
this, uh, you know, VIN is excision. It constitutes a treatment of choice to allow proper evaluation and exclusion of occult invasion. So you just excise with a one centimeter margin. 